just to do a quick meeting today, kind of open discussion. We got a little bit of talk safety. Okay. Uh, for, uh, we'll, we'll get into some stuff for your HVAC guys too, but you know, while we're uh, a little slower on the HVAC side, you guys might see yourself in some of these trenches, right? So uh, it's, it's good for us all to pay attention. Went out to a uh, job yesterday and just uh, saw a lot, man. It, it didn't get caught, right? We had a couple layers. We sent somebody by to look at it over the weekend. Taylor. <laughs> uh, we had a uh, uh, excavation crew, right? These guys are professionals, right? Uh, we're professionals, right? How many professionals do you know that are screwed up? Everybody raise their hand, right? Okay, made mistakes. Hurry through a job, uh, you know, whatever it is, right? Uh, so look, I mean, we're going to talk 10, 15 minutes on this topic, and we're going to kind of open it up. And you know, the idea is for us to share share some stories about, you know, should we've seen accidents that happen on jobs and how we can prevent, them, right? That's the whole goal. Okay. Uh, anyway, me and Mike ran out on a job yesterday and got there. 45 foot tunnel, okay? Uh, it's a long tunnel, right? We've, we've been in longer ones, right? Bigger tunnels. Uh, I know first, as soon as I pull up on a job, there's a, what the fuck, right? Uh, so, everybody understand what access and egress is? Everybody? Anybody not heard that word or term before? Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's not a. That's a sort of real question. It's not. You're not dumb if you haven't heard that conversation, right? There's some hey, this is good. We're talking about this. Okay. Uh, so access, right? How you're getting into a hole, okay? Or into a building, or whatever, right? That's access. That's the way you walk through the door, you get down into the trench, whatever that is, right? Uh, egress. Anybody got a guess what that is? Egress? Anybody? To get out. It's how you get out, right? Okay. Two things you always look at first. Before you ever get into a trench, ever even step foot, right? Access and egress. Okay. I'm getting down in this hole. I'm going to get down in the hole safely, right? That means I've got a ladder. Okay. That means I've got a ladder, not just a ladder, but a ladder that's at least three feet above the hole. Okay. That way I've got something to climb up on. This is three feet right here, right? So it means I've got a hand on something when I take my leg off the ladder and step to the side to climb over, right? Okay. Ladder needs to be secure. Okay. <coughs> One way or another, right? It can be wedged. I'm fine with that. Wedge in a quarter or, or whatever, right? Just as long as it's not going to slide to the side, left or right. Okay. Uh, keep it simple for you guys. Getting up on rooftops, ladders, right? Ladder safety is huge. Same thing as access. Okay. If you get up on top of a roof, you want to make sure you can get down, right? Access and egress. Okay. So there's a couple rules that apply, right? When we look at. I, I spent last night googling and trying to find it. I couldn't find it exactly, but uh, what I do know is typically the same. The same rules apply to a tunnel that apply to a trench. So, any, who all in here has had a trench safety class? You have. I have. I know Case in the house. I have. Okay. Cool. Um, so, whenever we're thinking about trenches, right? This, I just thought today was a good day to talk about this stuff, right? Because, you know, one, hey, we're doing our Thanksgiving uh, breakfast, right? Uh, that gets me thinking of things I'm thankful for. Okay. What are we thankful for? Well, hey, number one, I'm thankful for, uh, for God, one, okay, I'm thankful for my family, right, I want to see my family, I want to be around them as much as possible, okay, so, you know, these are things that, the thoughts that go on in my, in my mind anytime I'm out doing a job, working, I want to make sure that when I get to the job, I'm going to leave the job the same way I came in, right, maybe just a little more tired, right, that, that easy, maybe a little dirty, right, but I want to make sure I got all my fingers, right? I want to make sure I can walk, okay? 
I want to make sure my back's still good for tomorrow so I can go back to work and keep providing for my family, right? Uh, I want to make sure I'm not, something's not going to cave in on me, right? So, look, I'm not trying to scare everybody, but I am trying to scare everybody, right? These are, these are things that we have to think about, right? This shit is dangerous, okay? Right? This is why homeowners aren't taking 50 foot tunnels underneath their house, okay? One, they know they're not professionals. Two, they expect it to be done safely, right? They put it done right, right? That's simple, okay? Nobody wants somebody to die under their house, right? Who's heard of a trench collapse? Everybody, right? You've seen the news, pops up, right? I just had a little month or two ago, they're digging a utility line over, uh, I think it was in Corey, if I remember right, uh, somewhere in San Antonio. Uh, I want to say it was a 14 foot trench. They got this guy out, right? You rarely hear that, okay? Rarely. Typically it's, uh, typically it's, you know, they're digging them out for a day or two, right? Because uh, it's one, you know, you have somebody, somebody's buried, right? So you're going to send a bunch of people down in the hole to, to get them? already caved in once, right? Odds of so now you've got others. you got to get the hole safe, right, before you can even go down and get the guy out. Okay? Uh, just stuff to think about, okay? Uh, so, who knows the magic number for uh, the trench, right? So we've got a 100 foot trench, okay? That's four feet deep, okay? How many access points do you have to have? Anybody know? Okay. Oh, on a hundred foot. Take a guess. Five. Five. We'll see three. No. Mm -hmm. Three. Oh, you're dead on. Three. Okay. So the magic number is 25 feet. Okay. So we have a uh, we have a hundred foot stretch. Okay. every 25 feet, okay? So let's section this off, okay? I may not be exactly proportionate, but hey, I'm gonna try, okay? So if we said these three lines represent ladders, okay? Now we've got access, you know, we've got 25 feet to there, I've got 25 feet to here, I've got 25 feet to here, I've got 25 feet to here, right? I can get in and out. No matter what, trench. Something caves in here, right? I'm on this side. I can go out this ladder. Okay. Something caves in right, or I can go out this way, and, and so forth. Everybody, everybody, get that? Got that? Okay. It's pretty rare that we're doing 100 foot trenches, right? Very, very rare. We've done a couple here, uh, but these are things that apply. Okay. They're there for a reason, right? Uh, anybody ever done any big jobs of shoring and all that good stuff? Dude, it's a pain in the ass, right? It sucks. It's heavy. This stuff's not lightweight. Uh, depends on what you're using. You might be using wood, shoring, bars, right? It's hydraulic jacks, in case you need to use those. Yeah. Y'all seen the hydraulic jacks? Yeah. Dude, there ain't there nothing easy about it, right? I did a job out at DFW Airport uh, right before I moved down here. I spent two years out at DFW Airport. Uh, <coughs> It was a unique job, right? Had a uh, put a 23 foot manhole in in a parking garage, right? That was 18 feet tall. Okay, do the math. That's fucking tricky, right? These are big excavators. Uh, last four, last five feet open. We had to have a hydro uh, hydro guy come in and do it. The big deal was we couldn't get in the hole. Okay, you couldn't even shore that hole up until it was 23 feet deep, right? So we had to get creative. We had to get crafty. It took, you know, what would probably take me a day to dig with nothing over the top of me, right? But no safe, not having to take any safety precautions, right? Took me, it would take me a day. It took me two weeks to dig that hole, okay? That's just what it was, okay? But guess what? Nobody got hurt. 
Parker, right? Everybody wants to know the mama. Okay. Uh, it, it was a safe job, clean bill of health. They invited us out. We did three or four of them just like that, right? Right. Uh, so there's a reason reasons for these things. You know, I was one part of that job. I did a uh, it was a 10 inch tie in on a, I think it was a 20 inch water main that goes through the airport. Uh, it was big, I can't remember exactly the size, but I know this thing was probably, it was about 8 feet deep where I'm digging. I'm on the excavator, stand up to look over, see where I was at, spotting. Uh, again, couldn't have anybody in the hole because it was too deep until I had a dug, shored up. Uh, as soon as I stood up, I dropped the cell phone. Right? It sucked. Right? Guess where that cell phone is? It's still under DFW Airport. Right? I had to leave it. Right? It was, uh, cost me 200 bucks to get a replacement. Right? But it was, hey, it was, uh, you know, me out in the field, I'd jump down on dishes like that as a kid. No problem. Right? Just jump down, grab it, and go. Right, but this is, it just takes a split second, guys. That's a split second, right? That trench never caved, none of that, right? I sit there and you know, try to scoop it out with my excavator, got a big old bucket of dirt, we had guys out on the ground trying to find this freaking bone, dude, we never got it, right? The only reason I wanted it is I had some pictures on there and I had to back it up, right? That was, that was it, that was only my only concern. But, uh, <clears throat> stuff we sacrificed to be safe, right? What are we going to sacrifice? Uh, I think the number one thing is time, right? That's, it takes a lot of time, right? But it's it's this much time to get this much, right? So anyway, uh, access and egress, everybody get that? Okay, so you guys going out selling these tunnels, I want you to think about it, okay? You guys going out and taking a look at a job, think about the safety stuff. Okay, so let's go back to the tunnel from yesterday. Uh, one is a 45 foot tunnel, okay? Beam to beam, all the way across the house, okay? So, for, within 45 feet, is there access to the egress? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm all the way across this house, right? What should have happened? Two for access. Another access hole, another side, right? Dug straight through. Okay. Now, there's rules. So it says every 25 feet within when your trench is over four feet. Okay. The loophole there on tunnels. Okay. Same, same stuff applies to a tunnel that applies to a trench, right? So we know these tunnels are three feet tall, right? So it's under four feet. So technically, and I haven't found the literature I'm still looking and, and still searching. Technically, we're still within code, okay? At 45, right? But let's think about it like this. Me, personally, you know, let's take that extra step, right? What, what does an access hole cost us a dig mine? $400, okay? So, set the truck with Mike after he called the excavation group is one and the other is just that was one concern, okay? The other concern was, you know, the spoils were piled up. Everybody know what spoils are? That's your dirt, right? That's what you're pulling out, right? That's your spoils, okay? Uh, so, one thing, dude, there's eight foot tall or six feet tall dirt mound, right? Part of it's piled up a condenser, uh, the rest of it's piled up against the wall. Okay, you think about you're in the corner. Okay, it was probably a half acre lot. There was a, you know, 100 feet of grass behind this dirt mound. So plenty of space. No, no excuse. Okay, so we've got dirt piled up. Everything sloped down towards the access hole, right up against it. There's no walkway. There's no access. There's no easy way in, easy way out. What happens when you got dirt piled up next to a hole and you're walking over it? Shit falls in the hole, right? Real quick, rocks, uh, basic things. Uh, look, right then that job should have stopped. We should not have even started that job yesterday. 
Okay. It should have been a phone call. Hey, we need to get the excavation crew. Let's get it safe. Okay. <coughs> How long do you think it would take them to clean that out when they sent a three main crew out there? Two hours. Two, uh, yeah. Probably. Maybe three. To clean that up, make it right and safe. Okay. The three guys that were over there all day yesterday, how hard was it crawling in and out of that hole, walking over the dirt, not having the space? How much time do you think that that cost? Right? Quite a bit. It's kind of a pain. Huh? It's kind of a pain. Yeah, it was a pain, right? Uh, you're probably more sore for it, right? Uh, you have to work harder to get it done. Okay. Most, li most likely, if we would have just stopped and said, hey, Josh, you can clean this up, dude. It's not safe. We're not getting in this thing. Okay? Well, by the time I got over there, everything was packed in and it's solid. Nothing was really rolling over. So, hey, let's finish with this part in. Let's get it done, right? Uh, but right then, we should have stopped. Okay? Should have, would have, could have. Right? These are things that we need your help on, right? Whenever we talk about how many professionals make mistakes, hey, these guys, Dude, those guys busted ass and worked through the weekend to get that tunnel done for us so we could get it in and get it on the books, right? So you got two things there, right? Just, to, just slowing down just a little bit more, made the job a hell of a lot easier yesterday, okay? The second part of it, having another access hole on the other side, what happens when they have two access holes? Get air on the Yeah, air is good, right? But what about efficiency? Now you can put two crews on it, right? Okay. So the way uh, Josh explained it to me and uh, uh, Mike yesterday, was, look, man, I would have, I should have said something, but I didn't. This one really should have had two access holes on it. Uh, if you'd have had two access holes on it, I could have put two crews on it. This thing would have been dug Thursday, right? Twice as fast. Okay. So at 15 feet, right, they have to put another guy on. Okay. It goes from a three main crew to a four main crew. Okay. What does the fourth guy do? All he's doing is moving dirt. Okay. So now it took him uh, probably 30% longer, maybe 40% longer to dig that hole, right? Where and you've got four guys working less efficiently because they're having to move dirt further. Okay. Now if we had had two crews on that thing, those guys are digging in. Now they're working efficient. Right now, now we're saving time, we're saving money, dude. The two hundred dollar act. He's like, man, I would split the access hole with you. I'm like, dude, say something, man. I would pay two uh, two hundred dollars more on a was that a thirty thousand dollar job, right? We could afford two hundred bucks to be a little safer, a little more efficient. And guess what? We could put two crews on it as well, right? Working for both directions. Okay. Might not have been quite as efficient on our end, but hey, we, we still still have an access to get into the front or the back, not having to drag the pipe 45 feet. You could have done part of it from one end, another other end, yada yada yada, would go on and on and on on efficiency on this thing, right? But the number one thing is safety, guys. Okay, there's not too many things that uh, uh, rub me right. But, you know, there's number one safety. Dude, I see somebody just being flat out negligent. I'm guilty, dude. I'll stand on that top stuff and water every now and then, right? We're all guilty, right? GFIs are a big thing. Yeah, GFIs are a big thing, right? <laughs> Especially down the hole. Okay. Uh, you got a uh, look, man. I do not ever want to have to make that phone call to somebody's loved one and say, hey, I'm sorry. Right? It, it, it's not going to be a 9 out of 10 accidents will be prevented, right? The majority of them. Okay. Most of them are what, what's number one cause of, of accidents on a job site? Safety. And, well, obviously. Safety. <laughs> uh, but what's, what's number, one, no, number one cause? Anybody got a guess? Just being in a hurry. Okay. Right? Okay. What does anybody know what the leading cause of deaths on jobs are? Where they happen? Trench. No. On a ladder. Okay. Wow. Under four feet. Right? What? <laughs> that's right. Being on a ladder that's yeah. less than four foot tall? Well, I mean, up four feet, under, under four feet, falling from 
four feet. Okay. Seriously, right? Had a guy. Um, we'll get into. I think you guys are getting the point. So we'll open this up. We're gonna open this up. We'll like kind of dive in on some situations, but I'll share one story, right? Uh, Casey, you know the taps? Remember the taps? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Steve, Bobby, I can't remember his dad's name. Uh, I think it was, I think his name was Jerry, right? Pretty sure. I think that's the same name as Paul. Paul. Ninety-nine percent. So Steve and Bobby brothers, uh, Jerry, their dad, uh, all electricians. Okay, uh, some of the best electricians up in DFW, commercial wise, restaurant wise. Okay, uh, guys that we've worked with. For 30, 30 plus years, right? My grandfather worked with their dad, yada, 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 right? Uh, their grandpa. So, yeah, their dad was an electrician, their grandpa was an electrician as well, right? So, you got three generations of electricians there. Similar, our families are real, you know, when you go to DFW, everybody knows the Carters and everybody knows the Tafts, okay? Uh, we were talking about plumbing or electric, electricity, right? So, uh, Jerry's up on a ladder one day, and uh, anyway, ends up stepping off the ladder, okay? Plumber was out there, wasn't clean, keeping a clean job site, okay? Steps on a little piece of pot, what happens? He goes back, right? Coming off the first step of the ladder, okay? Uh, trip hazard, right? Goes back. Anybody remember those copper stub outs? Mm. Have a little point on. Mm. Mm -hmm. Have one sticking up on a manifold that was built up. You guys know what manifolds are, right? Whenever you cut the walls up and all they all come up in the wall. Mm. Uh, slips, falls, goes straight back. Goes right into his, goes right in right here. Uh, dude was in a coma for months. I mean, like six months. Eight months. It, was, it was a long time. I remember. Horrible, right? Uh, ended up passing away, didn't make it. But uh, anyway, Bobby and Steve still not right, right? They lost their dad way, 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 way too early. Right? They were, I think they were probably 30, somewhere in there whenever this happened. But uh, you know, it was crazy, right? My dad, I'll share one more. My dad was uh, in Alabama. Back when uh, you ever when they had McDonald's and the Walmarts, they still have a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for big McDonald's people. Family's been doing McDonald's since the 70s. And uh, anyway, dad was in a Walmart. They're working late at night, two o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, because that's when you can work, right? It's all night work. They're uh, trying to bust loose a, a piece of iron pipe up in the up in the ceiling, right? They're, Anybody had to go in on a remodel and bust something loose to cut tea in? Chicken suck, right? Especially on some two inch stuff, right? You get a 24 inch pipe wrench on it, you're cranking on it. It's, uh, it's got Loctite on it, shh, good luck, right? Shit sucks. Put cheer bars and everything else on it, whatever you gotta do, right? So, dad's up, top step of an eight foot ladder. Uh, they had another ladder set up. Dad's in there struggling to bust, bust his pipe loose. Buddy Larry Johnson uh, was on another ladder, steps on the back side of my dad's ladder, okay, the side you're not supposed to step on, right, puts a foot over, and uh, uh, one of the screws was, or pop rivets was messed up. Larry goes down, okay, knocks my dad off the ladder, my dad lands straight on his back, right, made me there, uh, completely crushed a vertebrae. Uh, still has back problems, right? I remember uh, my mom coming and saying, hey, your dad just got hurt. What do we do? I mean, we loaded it up. Well, I didn't load it up, but her and my uncle were all that to Alabama. Um, you know, thankfully, he was laid up for a couple months, no surgery, because of compression, fracture, or whatever it was. But uh, anyway, he's had two back surgeries since then. And, uh, you know, still in a lot of pain. Larry, the guy that stepped over, stepped over on the ladder, he fell too, but zero injuries, right? Uh, so you never know, right? Um, so, man, just think, think about these things, guys, okay? There's just not a, 
money's great, dude. You know? I mean, it's nice, man. Money buys nice cars and puts clothes on our kids. Uh, you know, it's there to give away whenever we want to be charitable, right? Uh, it's good stuff, but man, if you're not here, you can't make any, right? So, you know, just slow down and think about it. So, I've got anybody got a job site story? Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, I do. You do? This is a good one. <coughs> Zach was first. You gotta wait. Uh, when I when I did new construction for a couple weeks, uh, they were at the stage where they were pouring the concrete for the for the cafeteria. Is that a cafeteria or a gym at the school? And one of the guys decided he wanted to cut a two by four with a circular saw on his leg, and completely sliced open his thigh. And I don't even. I think he made it in the hospital, but he had called an ambulance. And yeah. Idiots. Mm -hmm. So this one, this one here is a uh, ladder safety. There was a guy I used to work with. Some people may know him, maybe not. Maybe uh, Casey may know him. His name is William. Lips, uh, oh yeah. No, uh, he was actually working. He had a uh, impact gun on top of a ladder, right? The impact gun, the one with the cord on it. He was taking out uh, an anode rod out of the water heater. Get to get on the ladder to get it. Well, he left the impact gun on top, he gets off the ladder, gets down to get the anode rod, kicks the ladder, the impact gun hits him in the back of the head, knocks him out unconscious. Had a concussion right then and there. Boom. Falls to the floor. He didn't have a helper with him. The customer came out, found him unconscious on the floor, called freaking called the MS, called the cops. Um, it turned out of course if he didn't have that impact on that ladder, it would have never hit him. And that's a huge safety thing when you're working uh, and you have tools or equipment overhead. You're either having a hard hat on for you know fall risk of stuff falling on your head, or you never work with anything that's going to potentially fall over your head. And I learned as well in new construction, putting nail plates on. I left my box of nail plates on top of the ladder, and you know I was putting nail plates up on the top top plate. And uh, <clears throat> I, I jumped down to get something off the floor. I kicked the ladder too. I was on my hands and knees finding something. The whole box of freaking uh, nail plates, 100 pound, maybe 80 left in there, came, crushed my hand. And dude, that shit could have been prevented by me and other people not making things on top of ladders while you work. It's pretty simple and safe just to bring it down as much as, as an inconvenience as it may seem to bring it down. Don't work with anything over your head, especially on a ladder. They, they can fall off and they can't hurt. And uh, fortunate enough, enough for the both of us, we survived. And there's nothing crazy that happened, but I mean, the possibility of, of death is is there. Yeah, scary stuff, dude. To always clear the top of your ladder every time you come down. I know it's a pain, but you never know. Had a guy, uh, put, actually not a guy, it was my cousin, okay, or he's a couple years younger than me, Brad, you know Brad, redhead, red, dude's redhead, yeah, right, this ties in, so he got, he picked up the nickname off of this one, but, uh, uh, y'all know what a four seek is, right, so these McDonald's would have like 10 or 15 four seeks in them, and, uh, you're putting, you put tub boxes in on the rough end, right? And these are boxes that you can pull out, and then you set the finished drink. It's just a like leave out in the concrete, right? Uh, the uh, so we're in there. I'm running water overhead, getting everything done. My cousin, I, I got onto him. I'm like, dude, don't sit. He liked to sit on his ass and dig holes. Uh, anyway, uh, Indian stuff, <laughs> leaning over and all this stuff. I'm like, dude, how are you doing this, right? And uh, I'm like, he's running the ladder, like, dude, you might want to move. He's like, oh, man, I'm all right. And about that time, dude, my elbow hits the freaking can of purple primer. <laughs> right? And he goes like this. He said, any, any install? Drop straight on him, right? And it's funny, because only because he was fine, but, dude, he lit up on fire like that, dude. <laughs> he's out there. I'm sitting there. I'm, at this point... <coughs> 
I bet I'm maybe 20 years old at this time, and uh, I'm laughing my ass off, right? And at the same time, getting the water hose, dude. I mean, he's literally standing under the water hose, shoving down his pants, just flushing, trying to get the stuff off. But dude, that dude was chafed and lit up, so he's a redheaded dude, so we. <laughs> We could straight call him fire cross every day. <laughs> 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 I just didn't name every job. But uh, anyway, so there, there's, there's some funny incidents that you can laugh about, thankfully, right? Uh, but what else, guys? I know you guys, I know you guys got some, we have a lot of experience in this room, man. What's, what, what's an injury you've heard of or, or witnessed or anybody? Not hydrating. <laughs> huh? See, not hydrating. Dude, mm. that's a good one. Somebody got airlifted out of a job site when I was in the union because they, they didn't make it either. Mm. Yeah, dude, that's no joke, man. So, over there, when I used to work at another company, it wasn't the competitor. Uh, <laughs> <company, laughs> it was Will's, yeah, Will's pump. Right. And um, like a week or maybe a month before I actually started there, there was a, a man that went into a tunnel in Austin, died over the weekend. The so, electrocuted one? Yeah. Yeah. He, he went up to the job site, as I was told this story, he uh, went to the job site on Friday to go uh, do a tunnel. The tunnel was soaking wet. He brings his cords in, starts getting started on the job. One of the cords was laying in a small puddle of water. I guess he sticks his hand in that water, electrocutes himself, and dies on Friday. The other one trying to figure out where he's at. He's in Austin. We're located in San Antonio. So they're like, oh, you know what? He's probably in the tunnel. He got on service. Next day comes by, they still don't hear from him. At the time, you're using paper invoices, so you couldn't tell if the job was still running or not. They assumed he went home, right? Tired, after a long job like that. Wet tunnel, it's probably not the best weather. Well, it turned out, of course, there was a fault in the, the breaker itself in the house that didn't allow to close the circuit whenever that uh, arc happened when he electrocuted himself. He died in that tunnel. And Moving forward, every, everybody that ever ran a tunnel at Wills had to have a GFI plugged in at the at the source, and then whether it was a single, double, triple, you then plug the cords in and go in. But if you show if you showed up on the job, and you didn't have one, like dude, you're going to get in trouble. But also per code, the inspectors they need to see that having a GFI. And if you don't have a GFI, you don't get in the pump unless you have you know power tools. That required no ports, hey, by all means, you can get them. But if you're running straight off the house, having a GFI is high critical to have because of that safety factor. And that dude died, he didn't go home. I mean, he just never woke up. That's so scary. Home. That's scary stuff, man, you never know. It's, uh... And the last thing we need to do. Check if the device is on your home Wi Fi network. The last thing me and Eric want to do is have to call anybody's parents, family, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, grandparents, and let them know, like, something that happened on our job caused this. That's the last thing we want to do. So we also need help with y'all looking out for y'all's safety, but also if there is a safety issue, let us know so we can take care of it ASAP. Because literally, as, as funny as it may sound, safety really is no accident. It's, it's, it's no accident at all. That's the hope I'm, I'm sure you have the point of it. So, y'all hear me say slow down all the time. That's for just multiple, multiple reasons. Uh, clean up, keep it a clean job site, all right? Just, uh, it doesn't matter if you're doing new construction service or any of that. I mean, it's, it's all the same. You, know, you don't hear emotion popping up on service calls often. Uh, well, they do. Okay. And that's the reason I think it's a good thing, personally. That, uh, I think they go over on some stuff, but uh, you know these things are there for reasons, right? Uh, serve for your safety. Uh, the uh, first thing that we do whenever we sh show up on a new construction job site, what is it? Our top out case was the first thing we do when we show up. The sweep. Yeah. We get the broom out. We sweep the job. Doesn't matter. <coughs> our trash. Their trash. It just doesn't matter. We're, that job's going to be safe before we start. Right. Uh, broom goes with us to every single job. That's one of your number. That's one of your number one safety tools, believe it or not. Right. It sucks to sweep. Right. We got some guys that are getting good at it around here. Right. We have the shop to keep clean. Uh, but man, that number number. That's one of the number one things to keep you safe. Do trip hazards or 
huge, 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 uh, big time accidents. Uh, what else? Anybody else got a little? I have a fun one. Okay. Okay. So uh, you know tarps, right? They're kind of sliding mm -hmm. on wood. If you put tarps on wood instead, it kind of like slides. I had my helper one time um, grabbing it from the top. And he, was, he didn't have much fear, which I was going to And I was there at the bottom, and we were already maybe like two story steps, and we're already close to the top. And he's like, I'm losing my grip, I'm losing my grip. So I'm like, all right, you're good, you're good, let go there. And I did that, let's go all the way, pushes my feet off of the uh, steps. And the next thing I know, I'm on top of this stuff. Air Heaven just sliding all the way down the steps. <laughs> it was pretty fun, but uh, got lucky. Yeah, I yeah. did. I could have ended up with the plane on top. I could have got uh, crushed by this 200. Uh, <coughs> you know, probably yeah. the legs. Uh, 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 well, since then, I got the sticky, the grip tarps. <laughs> yeah, and these things, I mean, they're, I mean, both, most of these accidents that happen on the job, you can laugh about, nobody gets hurt. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, straight up. But it's just that one, one in a hundred, one in a thousand. I don't know exactly what the uh, what it is, right? But uh, yeah, just slow down, guys. Anybody else got? Yeah. She got hit in the face with the whole arm. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it's broken that. Yeah. <laughs> Nose is broke. Nose. Yeah. Is Showed up to work all bruised up. Yeah, we have one guy, Jose, uh, still works for these, these are uh, utility foreman up at BMW now. And uh, he's just an all around, in case of those Jose real well, he's just an all around badass. If you put a guy on a machine or in a ditch, whatever, man, the dude works magic, it's shit done. Uh, he's out in a, a, a uh, putting in a uh, fire riser on a McDonald's, right? But everybody know what a fire riser is? Okay. Yeah, it's a riser. It goes into the riser room. It's where they get the water for the fire sprinklers, right? Uh, so we're do, we do the underground portion. We don't do the overhead. <clears throat> but anyway, so he's putting a, he's putting that in. He's cutting a, uh, uh, that was a C900 or whatever it is. A big green pipe, thick water pipe. Uh, C900. Anyway, so he's putting that he's putting that in, and uh, they're all push fittings, right? They're gasket. Okay, so when you get the, when you, they come from the factory, you'll see they've got a bell on one end and the other end they've got a bevel, right? So it can push past that gasket, okay? So if you cut the pipe, you've got a bevel in the end, right? Jose, now we got another tool for this and it's way faster and actually works better. But back in the day, we did it, we took a, everybody knows a quickie saw it is, right? Cut off the saw. That's where sleeves. Yeah. So they sleeves. So. But there weren't base shields and everything else now, right? Yeah. Uh, so they'll take that pipe and somebody's sitting there turning the pipe and uh, you're beveling the end of it, right? Blade comes apart. It wasn't Jose. Uh, what was the other guy? One? No. You probably don't. Anyway, his guy that works with doesn't work for us anymore. But Jose passed out when he saw it. So anyway, the blade came apart. Okay and hit his face right here, and I'm talking four-inch scar and laid it all the way over, dude. And Jose, weak stomach, looks at him, and blood everywhere, and freaking straight passes out. <laughs> I mean, just like, ah. Uh, so, yeah, Miguel. So it was Miguel. Uh, so Miguel, dude, he was out for a couple of months, man. I got into muscle on his face, a smile never was quite right. I mean, it jacked, it jacked him up. Uh, but, you know, hey, now it's, your safety glasses aren't just enough, right? You're cutting stuff. I mean, there's some things, grinders and whatnot, you really should have a base shield, right? Shit flies off, dude, this blade's coming apart. They ain't no joke, they're moving fast, right? I don't know how many revolutions, there are three or four thousand revolutions of a minute, right? Per se. Yeah, probably a minute. But anyway, the uh, jacked him up. No way no home scar face now. He's got a big old this this pretty it's a gnarly, gnarly scar. But anyway, that's all I got, man. Anybody got anything else? <coughs> no, no. Uh -oh.
on everybody to be like, you know, super cautious. Just be, be aware of your surroundings at all times. Uh, Whether it's here at the shop, you know, it could be you get here first thing in the morning. There could be somebody standing outside behind the trash can, you know, waiting to get you. Uh, that's not any wise. But just be aware of your surroundings at all times. Uh, that's just it. Just, as long as you're aware about it, at least you can see it coming. Be safe, guys. I mean, we talk about we have these meetings, and you know, we do a lot of motivational stuff. We do a lot of uh, uh, technical training and sales training and all that good goodness. But one thing we don't hit nearly enough is uh, the safety. Right? It's probably one of the easiest things that we talk about. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you got to get these nasty personal oh, yeah, yeah. stories to get your point across to some people. Uh, but man. Slow down. Don't, don't maybe pull up on the job. Right? If there's anything questionable, uh, man, let's just stop. Okay? It's, it's not nobody's in trouble with the stuff yesterday. But, hey, didn't freak out. Didn't send anybody home. Nobody got fired. Right? It was, uh, hey, everybody come out. We're going to learn for a minute. Right? So we, set, we circled up, had a quick safety meeting, made the decision, hey, it's, it's safe enough for us to continue work. But, hey, on the, on the next one, let's make sure it's just a little bit better, right? Uh, these are things that set us apart, okay? Uh, these guys are out there, there's guys out there trying to sell excavations for as cheap as they possibly can, okay? And whenever we're selling these jobs to our customers, you know, the things that they need to understand is that, uh,
tunnel collapse. Okay? It wasn't the tunnel that came in, right? This guy's dug in, and I think it was like a back-to-back -back bathroom, right? So back-to-back -back bathroom, you're going to have a pretty, pretty wide tunnel. Okay? So somebody had gone in and remodeled this house before these guys. They're tunneling to fix all the bullshit that the remodel guys did, right? Years before. Uh, guy goes in, next thing you know, six inches of concrete comes down on him, right? They had gone in and saw this foundation, okay? Put all the plumbing back and then just pour concrete. What they not do? Anybody? They didn't dial in, right? So when you take that stuff out, you go drill, you dial the head, and you put it in. That's why we have engineers in their jobs, right? So when you're looking, especially on a house that's been remodeled, look up, man. Look and make sure that, you know, I mean, if you got a, if you can see a full square, you could be in danger, right? Look for the signs of any, any movement in it, any gaps in the, in the, in the scene, right? Uh, look at those things. That stuff, it, it happens more, it's more common than, we all think, right? But it only takes a few sticks. All right, guys, that's all I got today. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but uh, hey, I'm mean, thankful for you guys, thankful for your families. I'll make sure all you guys go home safe. If there's ever a question on safety, and hey, somebody's trying to get you to do something that you don't feel safe, uh, give Mike a call, okay? If you don't feel like what Mike's telling you is safe, Give me a call, right? We're going to powwow on it. We're going to take a look at the job, right? Let's walk through. You know, we've all got different levels of, of experience on all these different things, okay? Uh, stuff Mike knows, I don't know. There's stuff I know. Mike, that, that goes for this room, right? We're, we're, we are a room of, and a group of professionals, okay? Uh, pros, right? That's where that word comes from. So let's act that way, right? What do professionals do, man? They lean on other professionals. They don't know the answer. So you always know the answer to everything. You just gotta find the right pro. Find the buddy that, that you lean on, right? Simple, 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 simple. But keep all your fingers, keep your eyeballs, don't fall off ladders, save your backs. Uh, it's important shit. So, alright, that's all I got.